So, welcome back to yet another Smedit tutorial with me, Tamino Sama. I'm going to be showing you some model conversion, an updated model conversion process for this this time. We're using the 3rd of October build currently with Smedit, and we're going to be taking our models from the uh, Trimble 3D warehouse, which is powered by Google. We're going to try something simple this time, so I'm just going to go for a teapot, and I think we're going to take the uh, this one here copper teapot pretty simple so we're going to download it and then we're going to open it with Google SketchUp which is something I've gone through in the past you can uh, download that for free so uh, let's just switch over to this is the teapot and as you can see it's fully modelable positionable whatever now a little tip that I've been doing is going to view and then say in axes and as you can see now there's that little intersect of the blue, green, and red lines. I like to move this with the move tool. So I go control A and move it across. So it's level on the blue. And then I go back to rotate the model. So I'm looking at it from a different way. And then I move the model forward to the blue along the green. And then finally, we move it down. And this helps with the position of the core just a little just a little and there we have it okay and also in this way you can actually use the rotate tool on certain points so if you wanted to exam for example to have this lined up perfectly straight you simply collect this vertice this one pull the mouse and as you can see it's rotating nicely we can make it snap to the green axis which means that this straight edge will be straight when it's converted so that's lovely and I'm happy with that so we're going to go file export 3d model teapot and it's exported so that's done and we can now close this program so going back to uh, the documents folder I can now look at the date modified and um, come down and we can see we've got teapot.obj and teapot.mtl so now moving over to Smedit I can see that all I'm going to have to do here is click on file and then import an OBJ. I always work in the same directory so you can see I'm already in users OSA documents which is where I'm exporting to with SketchUp. So if I full come down here I should be able to find teapot so if I just stick it on date modified again and there's teapot at the very top. Come on, there we go. So we're going to open this and we're going to make it 70, 70 the maximum box size. So open that and now we have our teapot. So I've chosen a nice small one to work with. Now checking back onto our browser, it looks like it was a sort of orangey yellow, maybe a brown. Yeah, yeah, brown with a black handle. So let's see if we can't do that. So obviously straight away, we're gonna try and uh, make the work less for ourselves. So let's go brown, all. Okay, so that's nice and easy. Obviously a teapot should be hollow, so we're gonna do modify hollow. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the selection box, which is really useful. So you can uh, get the selection box by holding shift and clicking and dragging. So I'm gonna select this top box and drag it back all the way to the back of the handle. <clears throat> Rotate your view just to make sure that the selection box is completely over the handle, as you can see it's not. And we can move the selection box by using WSADQE. So Q and E move along one axis. W and S move along another axis. And then A and D move along another axis. We can enlarge or contract by holding shift. So we're gonna move it over to this side and expand it with, all I did there was moved it with A and then expanded with shift D. Now I've got the whole handle selected. So what we gotta do now is click on black and all. Now we have a black handle on our kettle. Everything's looking good. Now you could add a little bit of flare at this point. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do we're going to give it a lid even though it doesn't have one 
So you're pressing W to navigate down so you can access the lid there. And then I'm going to customize the size of this so that it better covers the top half there. So all the way out to there I reckon. It's quite a big lid. Probably should make it a little bit smaller. So let's go up one and take it over. As you can see I've just about selected it all. So now with Shift D we'll expand out to the other side. It still needs to come out a bit. So let's just Shift Q, Shift D. There we go. And then continue with the Shift D to expand it fully over to this side. Now I'm going to use an ombre for this. So I'm going to try and make it as tight as possible. So if I bring this in. No, we've got something sticking out there. So there, there. Now I want to reduce the height and the length, bringing it out so that it's nice and tight. And this will mean that the fade effect uh, happens over a smaller space, therefore making it sort of a little bit uh, more obvious. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a yellow lid with a fade effect. So I'm going to go with all and then mods. We're going to go with Omba. And it's going to be top to bottom true, everything else false. We're going to go with the first color being yellow and the second color being black. Say OK. Now you've got this sort of weird pattern going on where it's black on top going into yellow. I actually wanted that to be the other way around. So the way that you want to do that is just click on mods, ombre, and just change the color positions around. So we're going to go black, yellow. Okay, there we have it. So now if I click edit, select none, and there we have a little ombre teapot lid, black handle, everything else nice and basic. Now of course, at this point, we'll probably want to harden all the blocks and then edit smooth. When selecting smooth, you can choose outside only, outside and inside, which is what I'm gonna choose for this particular one and then wedges and corners or just wedges or corners. You can also use the selection box to only smooth certain parts of the ship. So we're going to choose outside and in, one side and wedges and corners. There we go. If I now zoom in, you can see it's automatically changed the, uh, uh, changed the model, smoothing things out where it can. And because we made sure that the model was straight, there's been no problems with the uh, uh, straightness of the handle there. So. That's pretty much it. Um, obviously there are a few more things which I'd just like to show, but uh, they're difficult to demonstrate without also spawning the ships in. Under the modify menu you will find the move command. If I select move and then select mi say minus, minus 50, what's going to happen is it's going to move my core 50 blocks below the ship. So I'm going to say OK, and now as you can see it's moved it all the way down there. Now a lot of people ask, if I want to move again, and it still says minus 50, that isn't from where it used to be, that's where it is from now. So that means that if I put in uh, 30, it's going to go up the Y axis. So 30 up, and we're back inside. I actually want this to be at the bottom, so I'm going to take this back down again by 10, and see how far away we are. So there we are. Probably needs to go up about 5 more blocks. So we say dorsal 5, and enter and here we are a teapot turret so that will happily dock um, I believe that the core is is the core central no it's not so but it is central to the entire model is it not <coughs> when you take into account the handle and the t-spout so I think that's actually fine and that's a done deal so at this point I'm uh, just literally going to uh, hit file save as blueprint remember if you hit save it will overwrite your isanth and you'll have many many unable to move teapots flying around or whatever it was that you were working on so make sure that you save as before using the just simple save command because you will overwrite your isanth um, so we're going to call this teapot copper <coughs> incidentally if you need to rotate your core or anything like that you can also use the rotate command. Rotate again is from the core. So pitch goes around X, yaw goes around Y, roll goes around Z. 
Last time I used it was for the Gundam arm and I rolled 270 degrees around the Z-axis in order to make it a turret arm. Um, it remembers the settings that you used before. So I just thought I'd uh, throw a few of these things out here because there's so many of the uh, mods in here. You can actually add an image or text, striping. Uh, you can even replace any block for any other block in the game. So. Just wanted to say about that. You look forward to the teapot turret, and uh, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.